Do you want to learn how we're weaving fancy patterns into our space net for GGBY? Check it out in this episode of How Not to Highlight. Hi, I'm Charlie from Charlie's Webs, and I'm going to show you how to weave a pattern into your net. Okay. So what do you got going on here? Um, you basically, this, this string is straight. Here, watch out real quick so I can yep. see on the other side. So you just made this knot super tight basically, from there to here. And then you're just sucking it into this part. Uh huh. Basically we're doing a bunch of different patterns here, but all in the form of stripes. So we're starting on one side and then sucking a bunch of stripes in. Basically to make a stripe, you put one line across wherever you left off and then you go back and forth and weave it to the next one. Okay. And you tighten this line up against it. So this this line gets really tight. So as you're weaving, let me see you weave it. As you're weaving, you go Well, this weave right here is a special weave. This is the one that that blue space net up on top of uh that was above the the main net at GGBY was. This okay. this is that pattern. And this next pattern is a different one. And there's a bunch of different patterns you can use, but basically it's the same kind of a deal you're making stripes this one i'm going to go back and forth with this blue. why do you add this twist right here that's just style okay. i'm keeping the twists on this side and not keeping them on this one to keep this one consistent to this pattern okay. but when i'm done with this one this one's going to be a diff a new pattern i haven't done before where it goes first i'm doing this then okay. i'm going to take a different color and go back and forth right next to it. So attaching to the next one, and then here, then the next one, and then here. And so as I go, I'll add more and more colors, and it'll create this cool zigzag that goes back and forth. Sometimes you get knots. Knots are not fun. How knots to highline. One, two, three, four. I'm always spacing them exactly the same amount all the way across so that I have the same amount to go back to when I run through. And now I'm going to grab a different color. You just lock that off, that's it? Yep. Okay. What do you want? What do I want? I want you to tell me what you're, what you're pattering over here. Well. All right. <laughs> I was trying something new to contrast our just triangles and... Okay like this and so we had more triangles and I was crossing over just doing a simple cross up here I spin it downwards because I'm going down back up and then this way I'll spin it back up just make a bunch of diamonds Pretty fancy. Yeah. So just do anything and do it consistently throughout the. Th yeah. Kinda. Of. Kinda. Having a vision and then sticking to it. It's if you kind of follow any basic idea and just start weaving it, you'll figure it out really fast, and you'll have to start coming up with your own patterns. So I'm coming in with the second layer of rope in here. So you start. You can start to see the zigzag that mm. goes through here. So I can red, so sexy. This one right here, there's this cool way that this pattern works where you lay down these these are the stripe ropes, the first ropes that we lay down. That was the first stripe. And you basically just go around like this. Okay. And you don't have to do any knots. And then when you do the next one, you go around with that same um direction. And it almost looks like there's no knot there and you can't even tell which direction any of the ropes are going makes these perfect little triangles but anyway I'm ready going through with this rope when I'm done with this I'm gonna go through with a bright rope on all the empty spaces and the same rule applies whenever you cross over one strand you always yes wrap and whenever, it. This you is, never this, break that rule ever this is a rule that goes with like chaos patterns everything if you want a really nice clean knit you always wrap your you wrap your ropes with the grain. You don't you don't wrap like this. That ends up making a little knot thing that kind of like does that while the net moves and that okay. can create a weak spot. Okay. So you always want the candy cane. 
The candy cane. You, know, you gotta, gotta get the candy cane effect. And so once again here, it's kind of like music. I'm skipping every other one. Okay. Sticking to the same polyrhythm. It's music with ropes. It's exactly music. If, this is, if music looked like something, this is what it would look like. <laughs> That's a good way of putting it. <laughs> Oh, that helps me understand music better. Yeah. <laughs> it's, look. Oh, well, Get look it. at you. <laughs> <laughs> and one thing you always want to do is you want to rig this in the park in the shape that you're going to have it. We um, have to do these ones in the park and not at my house because those legs on that side are 12 feet long in order for our uh, corners to take the right shape for the nets at GGBY. You ran out of rope there. Yes, I ran so out of rope. So what do you do? This is patented technique. Just kidding. Patented it's, technique. It's, it's actually literally... the worst way to join two ropes. But is it? it is, but it's still, it still, it doesn't matter. It'll never break. It's an overhand knot, right? Yeah, just an overhand knot. I always try to keep them really nice and clean and like pull it tight before, you, before uh, but I keep going. But what I like about what Charlie's doing here is that he's not using a hundred foot piece of paracord that's the biggest thing. he's using like 10 foot pieces of paracord so he doesn't have to do that See, even with right this one right there here, that, that was three strokes of having to pull that through and that adds like a good that that can with a really long note i mean really long rope could add like it, it could make something that that should last like five minutes last 30 minutes yeah, I was using some big ass ropes before. Big ass ropes are okay if you're trying to do chaos pattern over big blank sections, but as soon as you have to weave it a bunch, it's like yeah, short sections are way, way, way better. Big ones then... So don't be afraid to have it too short of a piece. Yep. And we tension the fuck out of this basically as straight legs. Like this, this uh, span set was straight when we started. And then the more we weave in it, the more it uh, sucks in the sides and that's I actually really like this rainbow. It's gonna look really cool. And like when they fill this in, they can um, go this way under and over. And by pulling it that way and pulling it that way, it creates. Let's see here. I guess it very much like this. It holds the stripes in place and kind of creates a little extra tension. Yeah, it stabilizes it a lot. So um, this looks more like the chain link method here kind of yeah that's more of just dream catcher method right there you're basically doing the same thing that you do for a dream catcher but going back and forth instead of completing a full circle explain what a dream catcher is a dream catcher is basically anywhere where there's an open space if you just take a rope and start tying it all the way around in a circle like tie it off here tie it off here tie it off here make a bunch of little loops and then when you get back around keep tying it you tie it off to the loops instead so each time you do it you spiral around and it starts closing in on itself and if you don't even even if you don't use knots if you just kind of loosely beat it in you can after you go around a couple times you take that extra string and pull it and the whole thing just closes like a big iris and tightens really nice so that's a good way to make a good circular net a circular. or fill in a circular spot in a net when you change directions 180 degrees with your paracord, not every time that you intersect paracord, but when you're intentionally changing the direction, this mostly will happen on perimeter, but also when you're doing patterns. You want to wrap it twice because otherwise it oscillates back and forth on that single spot and will wear it out. And there's no real way to repair that. So you wanna make sure that it is bomber for the long term especially if it's a permanent net. Hey, this net is only one twelfth of the net. It's only one corner. It's gonna be 1600 square feet with a high line in the center hole because the hole is gonna be so big. So this is gonna be the biggest net in the world and it's gonna be at GGBY this year. So make sure you grab your tickets at ggbygathering.org so you can see this in person. Over here, this method, when, um, this, Right here is the TreeNet Willy branded method. At least that's where I got it from. I, I got it from looking at his pictures. And 
it's pretty easy. What, uh, what you have to do is say, picture, picture right now the inside of the net is empty still and all we have webbed is all this right here. So basically what you do is through all this empty space, you take a line, tie it to one side, tie it all the way up to the other side and then go back and forth between them and tighten that up until it sucks that line in. And then take more lines and run them through like this. So this rope right here is the rope that goes back and forth. And that line right there is the one that got sucked in this way. And then once that was there, we can run all the other filler lines through it and then add another layer right here. And you just keep on stacking on more layers and layers until, and you can use different colors and make cool stripes and stuff. Right now I'm adding the filler to one of the stripes. So as you, as you can see previously, this rope was added and then this rope was put in the middle to suck this in before any of this was here. And now I'm just going back and filling it in. Now every time you pass a line on these, you wanna look at the direction that the line is angled. And that's gonna determine which way you wrap it. Give it a little tug so that you get the little twist. You want those twists to turn out perfect. And then just start going down the line. And as you go, it just creates a bunch of little perfect triangles. You have this one line, what do you do with that? This is uh, the same as one of these, but it's just bunched up. So I'm just opening it up, pulling my line through there. And boom, there, now it looks the same as the rest. Unlike the, the regular weaving pattern, this type of weaving tends to tight, to get really, really tight because each time, instead of just weaving into what's already slacked there, you're, you're adding a piece and then tightening it up and tightening it and tightening it and then adding another piece and tightening it until it's super tight. So yeah, this net, can, this net I've noticed, I've had to um, uh, reduce this three times now. This net has kind of a different, slightly different pattern on all of them, um, but we're starting out with the same root for each corner. Like it's all these uh, ropes that go from the inside directly to the corner. And so for most of them, I've been doing these zigzag, these patterns that go directly across. So they basically weave like a regular piece of cloth almost. So um, show me over here. This is uh, only has this oh yeah, okay, so this was from the beginning. I put all these in and the way you do that is you run it back and forth like a shoelace and then once it's all there, you tighten. You go in and out and tighten each one until it's like this. And then, well, for this part up here, I haven't done it yet, but I'm gonna separate all of these so that they're all in a nice pattern, kind of like over here. And you separate them? Um, you take a, you start uh, thickening this line right here by taking a line, run it through there, run it over to the rope that you have and then pull it back and it pulls the whole rope up to the part that you want it and then you tie a knot and then move on to the next one, pull it, pull it, you know, until you get to the end and they're all in a perfect array. So this one here, the I took that design and decided to do squiggles going back and forth. So that's the theme of this one. Okay. And then over here, I'm doing... So you showed me something. You said you start with a straight line here and you don't start here, and why? Well, when we first started, I started doing the, the squiggles this way. Okay. And, and that's cool when it's close in because it's hugging this. But then as you go out, I realize that as soon as this gets any, it, it, as soon as it gets loose, all that, tension goes away, this is all gonna be slack and there's nothing that's holding that rope out. So it's gonna fall and get all saggy and end up resting down here somewhere. So. So you add a couple straight lines like you have right here. And then, um, and then what's, what's your next step? Weave a little right what you're doing? Okay, this part I've basically, I started over here with this rope and I'm going back and forth on this one, back and forth on this one, back and forth on this one, kind of just making my way. Okay. zigzagging it down each one and then when that's done I'm probably gonna run lines back through this to add redundancy 
but this is a kind of a an, a modified version of another method. And I've run out of line here. I'm going to tie my line off really quick. Just coil picture. Perfect. Just like that. And go cut myself. Yeah, just a temporary one. Yeah, that's just to hold it there. And then I cut a piece that's. This is another thing. If you have a really long line, every single knot you tie is going to take like 30 seconds. That ends up making people spend four days on a net. Okay. If you use a short piece, is when it's really short, you can go just like get a bunch of knots out really quick. Yeah, but if it's like 10 meters long, you're pulling it through for days. Oh days yeah, and days. people, like I even realized it. I, I, I was doing that with like, an entire rope span without cutting it at all for a long time before I realized, why am I doing this? So basically just do something and repeat it over and over. Kind of. I mean, that's pretty, that's a, there's a, that's how you weave. a thousand different <laughs> ways that you can, you can do it, find something that works and repeat it. I attach it to that so that it holds this whole okay. piece of rope up that way. Okay. Now, I also want to point out that this right here, this is, an, is a rope that is connected here and here, but not to anything over here. So, okay. And all these ropes here are pulling down that way. Okay. So it just means that I'm going to have to attach something to this side of the rope that pulls it back and counteracts that when I'm done. I think I'm starting to understand how the patterns go.